One of the most important uh, developments in the field of endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism in recent years has been the use of glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonists for the treatment of, of obesity. Uh, there are now uh, multiple drugs that are in that class that are being used for treating obesity as well as diabetes. We know that in the United States that about 30% or so of individuals are overweight uh, and about 42% of adults are actually obese. And therefore, this epidemic needs to be treated because of the severe problems that occur with obesity, such as diabetes, heart disease, uh, blood clots, uh, a variety of uh, associated illnesses. So uh, GLP-1 uh, receptor agonists have a multitude of actions. Number one, they increase the secretion of insulin. Secondly, they decrease the production of glucagon, which decreases the appetite stimulation of the brain. And thirdly, it decreases the motility of the stomach. Uh, and so individuals, after they eat, feel satiated uh, uh, with very little food in their stomach. This uh, combination of actions results in a tremendous amount of weight loss. In fact, uh, some of the studies have shown that after a year, about uh, the majority of patients, uh, you know, about half the patients or so will have lost uh, anywhere between 5 and 15% uh, of their body weight. Now, these drugs uh, are contraindicated in individuals who uh, have pancreatitis or history of thyroid, uh, medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 in their family. Uh, the drugs uh, do have a number of side effects, uh, mostly gastrointestinal, uh, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, and gallstones can occur. Most of these side effects abate with continued uh, usage, and the drugs are given in increasing doses until a steady state dose uh, is achieved. The um, uh, problem with these drugs, besides the uh, side effects, is that uh, they only work as long as you give them. Once you stop the drugs, weight gain occurs uh, again, unless the individual has developed uh, behavior modification to the extent that they're, they've changed their diet, they've changed their exercise pattern to try to keep the weight off. Uh, these drugs only should be used in individuals who have tried diet and exercise before and, and have failed that as a primary therapy. The other problem with these uh, medications is that uh, they're quite expensive. And then uh, uh, finally, we don't know what's going to happen in the long term with the use of these drugs. There's been a number of years uh, that the drugs have been on the market for type 2 diabetes, uh, but for their, their use for obesity is relatively recent, uh, and we just don't have long-term information. Nevertheless, the medications have been uh, really a uh, boom for many individuals who are obese, who have tried diet and exercise and have been unsuccessful, who don't want to undergo uh, gastric bypass surgery or one of the other types of uh, bariatric surgeries. Uh, and so the drug, uh, uh, this drug class uh, looks like it's going to be extraordinarily useful uh, and uh, as long as people take it.